Taylor Harrison. Taylor, nice to see you happy after a wish. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we have our days, ups and downs. It's part of the journey, but uh, I'm just happy that I'm, you know, one step closer to my goal. What was different this time versus the last time? Just, uh, I think a lot of things, you know, last fight, I was fighting a very experienced opponent. It was very short notice. You know, I, I found out that my opponent changed two days before, so I didn't really have a lot of time to study. And to be quite honest, I'm not going to blame my coaches, but they were like, oh, you got this. You know, like they kind of like downplayed it, I think, just to keep me relaxed. And so I kind of went in there thinking like she would be a lot easier than she was. And she was really tough, very smart, really good survivor. I mean, I don't think I was ever really in any danger, but. Um, just experienced girl, so, uh, you know, I, I struggled to put her away and I was not happy with that, but this time, um, things went a lot better. I feel like, too, I had a six month layoff before I fought Larissa, and this is a very short turnaround. And I come from an Olympic background where it's like, you fight back to back to, you know, you spend six weeks in Europe going from tournament to tournament to tournament. So I, I like that feeling of being on the go, being on the grind, success breeds success. Kelly, you quoted as saying that you want your opponents to never want to fight you again. Yeah. And I know after the first fight, it was a little bit disappointing you when you got the win. Yes. Do you feel better about that after this win? Yeah, of course, you know, I, I mean, it's, I want to win in, in the most dominant fashion possible. I want to go out there. I don't want to get a scratch on me. I want to beat them, beat them, beat them until they want to quit, and then they don't want to ever get back in that cage with me again. Hey, Kayla, so I went to go visit American Top Team, and I know you guys have a big trophy case, a bunch of championship belts and other materials. How would it feel to just like have like a PFL championship with your name? In that? Uh, I can't wait. So the owner of ATT, Dan, is a little bit of a trash talker. We have a great relationship. And uh, the one thing that we agree on is I'm going to be filling that case with gold. So you brought it up in the cage uh, afterwards, Sarah Coffin, and it almost feels inevitable at this point. Is that a fight that you really want to maybe, I mean, there's not a lot of criticism of you thus far, but maybe the one thing Thanks. is you haven't fought a big name. Uh, is that a fight that you want so that you can kind of get that out of the way? Yeah, I mean, what I, I honestly, like, I don't, I'll fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. I'm not here to have easy matches or easy fights and just run away with the money. Like, I've made it very clear that my goal is to go down as one of the best to ever do it. And I know that's going to take time, and I know that's going to take patience, and I know it's going to be a long road, but I'm in it for the long haul, and I think Sarah Kaufman is a stepping stone to that path. Okay, uh, speaking of American Top Team, obviously you guys been on the trend, Amanda, Jupe and Jesus, Oops. and now... Oh my you. god, Jorge, <laughs> Jorge, <laughs> Georgie! Yo, um, like, talking about how's it that to be a part of that culture, just... Oh, uh, it's amazing, are you kidding me? Like, first of all, the facility, if you've ever been there, it's amazing. Um, the one thing is they don't have um, equal locker rooms, the men have a sauna, so I'm going to have to talk to Dan about that. But, uh... It's an amazing training facility. The coaches, I mean, my corner, you know, Steve Mako, Mike Brown, Anderson Franca, but every coach there helps me. Mikey, Ron, Payumpa, Conan, all of them. You know, they're all a huge part of my success. And not only that, but my teammates are killers. Like, I, I train with the best team in the world. Every single day you walk on the mat and, like, I'm in survival mode most of the time. Like, I'm just trying to, like, make it, make it to Friday. But... I love that. I love that grind. I love that feeling because it, it br builds me up. It brings me up. And I don't know. I would never go anywhere else. And quick little question. I just want to get your opinion. What was your reaction to Jorge getting the knockout by Nashville? Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, he is insane. No, he's literally nuts. Like, Master Doll and I have, uh, so he has really nice hair. And. <laughs> I have kind of, in Florida my hair gets really frizzy. I have naturally curly hair, but it gets really frizzy. So he was like, oh, maybe, you know, Aspen likes to do a lot of clinches. Maybe you can show me some judo throws. And I was like, I'll show you some judo throws if you give me some hair product. So I told, I, he was FaceTiming Mike the other day, and I was like, listen. I said, I know you said you were going to give me a discount after, like when he was going to give me the hair product, but now I want it for free because I know you're rolling in the dough after that knockout. I mean, it was just, who does that? He 
He's crazy. I love it. <laughs> uh, Kayla, do you usually, I think from the last interview, I have a you said you watch a movie before a fight every time? I used to watch a movie before I fought all the time when I was growing up. I used to watch, when I was younger, I used to watch Bloodsport. And then as I got older, I used to watch Rocky Three. I don't really watch it anymore because I've only <laughs> seen it probably 15,000 times at this point, but, you know, I go through the highlights in my mind. So, I mean, coming into fights, you seem really relaxed usually. How do you just, you know, maintain your mental health and just stay very calm? What do you do coming into fight week? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, well, fight week is always a little bit different. It's obviously about just staying calm, staying relaxed, not letting the jitters get to you. I think nerves are a good thing, but really, before all of that, I practice a lot of you know positive thinking and visualization. I write down my goals at the beginning of every year. I talk about, I think about what I need to do in order to reach those goals. I write down key areas of focus, and every night before I go to sleep, I envision myself reaching those goals. So, this year, for instance, it was to beat you know Larissa Pacheco, and then it was to finish this fight against Morgan. And now my goal every night I'm going to go to bed envisioning me going out into the semifinals and beating the crap out of, how do you say her, Gina, Gina, Fabian, beating the crap out of her, and then, you know, Jenna, is it Jenna? Yeah, Jenna. Oh, that's awkward, okay, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every night before I go to sleep, I literally walk myself through my days, and, and the biggest days of my life, so that by the time I get to fight week, and by the time I get into that cage, I've done it a thousand times in my mind, and that really helps relax me, and calm me down, and make me believe that this is my day, this is my purpose, and I'm not afraid to win. Can we expect Amanda Nunez or anyone from ATT to come to your, I suppose, assume you make it to the finals? Don't assume, just know. Um, listen, Amanda's pretty busy. She's kind of a badass. <laughs> but uh, she just texts me. We call each other, our nickname's Cutie Patootie. So me, Nina, and her all call each other Cutie Patooties. And I don't know, I would love for her to come to my fight, but I think she might hopefully probably be doing another fight with Cyborg. I don't know if they want to do that around the same time as the final, so I don't know what's going to happen there, but yeah, she could definitely come to my fight anytime she wants. How does it feel getting ready to go to Vegas and um, fight just the way and get that belt? Feels great. This is my life. This is my, this is my goal. This is my dream. This is what I'm destined to do, so I mean, I'm living my best life. <laughs> With a lot of key free agent names like Cyborg floating around, mm -hmm. coming, you know, is that a fight that would intrigue you if, if she were to come to Vietnam? For sure. I'll fight anybody. One more, guys? Yeah, one more. Kayla, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned a lot of the fighters that you work with yeah. in your camp. Yep. You know, how have you felt that they have impacted your evolution as a fighter, as a person over the last year? Uh, I mean, just, you know, monumentally. For, I mean, to get to train next to the people that I train next to, to get to watch Amanda go and reach such a pinnacle of the sport, or watch Dustin Poirier go and reach such a pinnacle of the sport, and, and be next to them every day on, on the mats is like, if they can do it, I can do it, you know? Even just training with Amanda, like, she's so calm, she's so relaxed, she's so, like, just naturally... And like, I don't even think I do it on purpose, but I start to mimic her. And then I become a little more calm and a little more focused and a little more relaxed. And so it's like, I don't know, it's just this like cesspool of excellence, you know? We good? Okay. One quick question. Yeah. Uh, it seems like everything's going so well for you. However, from the outside of the end, how are you mentally? Because it seems like sometimes you're not 100% there. Mm -hmm. uh, being the fact that you were so emotional within that fight. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you mentally? Are you strong 100% all the time? I know we all go through it, but when the fighters, it affects them a lot harder. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's an interesting question because obviously my job is to be a fighter and my job is to show up and put on a performance inside that cage, but... Life doesn't really care what your job is, does it? And life doesn't really care if you have to get up and go to work. Sometimes life hits you really hard. And uh, I've definitely been going through some stuff. And it's definitely not been easy, personally. But this is when I feel most Kayla. This is when I feel most alive. This is when I feel most closest to my true self. So as long as I keep this and I keep that, 
I'll always be mentally tough. There's nothing, listen, the stuff I've been through in my life, the things I've had to go through, nothing inside that cage is ever going to be worse than what my life was. So I'm always going to be mentally strong enough and I'm always going to have the ability to dig just a little bit deeper than my opponent. And one last question. Uh, PFL is obviously doing really well for you. And you, uh, I believe PFL released a video with you speaking on how it's so equal with the men and women mm -hmm. and you have a chance to be a millionaire. Can mm -hmm. you speak on that? I mean, this is literally my dream job. Like, the one reason I was so hesitant about MMA was like, uh, they don't really treat women the same. Like, they're kind of sexist. You have to be really pretty or talk a lot of trash to get a good fight or to get paid. And the PFL said, hey, hey, we're taking that side of, out of it, all right? We're, if you're exciting and you finish in the first round, you get extra points, but this is all based on merit. This is all based on how you perform inside the cage. And not only that, but the men and women are equal, 100%. Like, look, that's literally my dream. I get to fight for one of the greatest companies in the world and do what I love every day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>